Hi everyone, this is Dr. Nelly. So, we're now going to start on chapter 2, which is all about atoms, molecules, and ions, an introduction to these ideas in chemistry. And it's very important to understand this because everything is chemistry is based on the idea that matter is composed of atoms. And so what we're going to start with in this series of videos is talking about the history of the atomic theory of matter, which is how we come to believe that everything is composed of atoms. And we'll talk about first what happens prior to Dalton's atomic theory and uh, uh, how it comes about that we um, have the atomic theory of matter. And then in the next series of videos, we'll talk about what the atom is composed of. So we'll talk about the discovery of the electron, um, the concept of the electronic charge, which is important because then that um, serves as the basis of understanding the electrostatic attraction between protons and electrons. And then the discovery of the nucleus later on, which of course is composed of protons and neutrons. And then what we now consider as the modern view of the atom. Um, the rest of the chapter is going to be on introducing various um, topics related to this, although not necessarily in a historical perspective, more in terms of definition. So what we uh, consider as molecules, what are ions, uh, how to distinguish among these things, um, and then a little bit into the periodic table, what the periodic table is composed of, how to read the periodic table, and then lastly we'll talk a little bit about nomenclature, which is how we name these compounds and molecules, both inorganic and organic. And the inorganic nomenclature is probably something you've seen before, and I would expect a certain amount of understanding here from prior courses. The organic nomenclature may be a little new, so we'll talk a little bit more about that, okay? All right. So now, as I mentioned uh, in this specific series of videos, I only um, want to focus on the history of Dalton's atomic theory, okay? So specifically, the videos should cover these concepts, which is, what is chemistry prior to the mid-1600s, okay? What, what do people think of chemistry? What elements exist? And then we'll talk a little bit about uh, Boyle, Robert Boyle, who first... Um, was the first person to really try to incorporate this idea of the scientific method that we talked about in chapter one. Uh, of course, at that time, people didn't really call it the scientific method, but he was the first person to kind of uh, uh, emphasize this idea that you need controlled experiments um, and careful, you know, quantitative uh, observations in order to be able to make uh, statements on how things work okay prior to this everybody is making qualitative statements so that's he's kind of the pioneer of that and then we'll go through a series of laws uh, scientific laws conservation of mass definite proportion multiple proportion that um, basically you know gave the Dalton uh, in the end the idea that we should take um, you know, we should basically consider that matter is composed of atoms instead of, um, as we'll talk about, these uh, four essences that were proposed by Aristotle. Okay, so let's talk about the history uh, a little bit of this. Uh, let's start with this part here, and then we'll see how far we go in this video, and then we'll continue with the rest of these topics in the rest of the videos for this, top, uh, for this uh, uh, part of the chapter two. Okay, so let's first get back to that fundamental concept in chemistry that I mentioned in chapter one. What you want to get at uh, in chemistry at the end is this understanding that we're studying matter, right, which is everything that contains mass and has some velocity. Uh, the idea is then what we want to get to is that matter uh, is composed of atoms or molecules and the arrangement of the atoms and the composition, the types of atoms that make up that matter, is what eventually determines its properties, okay, physical and chemical properties, whether it's combustible, whether it will boil at 100 degrees or 800 degrees or 20 degrees, depends on what kind of atoms and, you know, the type of atoms and the, the way the atoms are arranged, okay. Now, what's more important from here is that it turns out that it's the electrons in the atoms, okay, that determines how these atoms are arranged and the type of atoms that will make up that molecule, okay. 
So the basic concept, again, in chemistry, as I mentioned in Chapter 1, is that the electronic structure of the elements really holds the key to understanding everything. What we're going to do in this chapter is really start talking about atoms in more detail and then also talk about electrons in more detail. Okay? Now, it's not going to be very detailed uh, at this point in this chapter, but you'll get a better understanding of it. And later on, um, when we talk about quantum chemistry, then we'll really go into how chemists uh, envision, you know, or, or, or represent the atoms and the electrons. Okay, so let's start talking a little bit about history, right? It's very important to kind of understand how the science comes about. So in the ancient times, you know, very, very uh, long time ago, in the time of the um, Egyptian uh, pharaohs and whatnot, you know, the, the first people to kind of talk about chemistry in that at that time is, is um, you know, there's some records from Egyptian uh, hieroglyphs that um, there's a process called chemia, okay, which is basically referring to the process of embalming the dead. So if you remember that we have these mummies um, from uh, Egyptian times, and the whole process to be able to make sure that the dead is preserved um, is referred to as chemia. And that's really kind of the root word for chemistry. Uh, in fact, in some cultures, um, the word chemia is still used to represent uh, chemistry. It's just the word that's used to um, denote the subject chemistry. Okay, So chemia, again, referred to the process of embalming the dead, but um, you can, you know, from then on, people then realize that you can use the same chemical processes, which is, you know, using certain extracts from plants or flowers or soil or, uh, you know, uh, trying to extract metals. All of these could then be applied to other processes, like you can use it to color cloth, dye the cloth to different colors, make glasses, uh, extracting metal from earth, as I just mentioned. And so that's the beginning of chemistry, okay? And in fact, at that time, you know, the people who could do this, the chemists, in other words, the ancient uh, chemists were very respected and uh, chemistry, um, you know, the different metals that were extracted from earth were, were associated with different types of um, uh, astronomical objects like gold is associated with the sun, silver is associated with the moon and so on. And, and you might see this in, in certain um, other subjects, you'll see this, for example, if you, su you know, study ancient Greek or you study um, uh, literature, a lot of times you'll see that the, there's uh, uh, the way people refer to the sun is sometimes using the word gold or the moon is using a uh, word that refers to silver and so on. Okay. Now, at about um, 2,400 years ago, okay, uh, at that time, the people were, you know, this is about the ancient Greek time, people already knew um, certain elements. They were able to extract elements from uh, uh, from the earth. They had some techniques developed already at that time, okay? And these were the, you know, if you, if you kind of take the modern periodic table and put the elements that people knew at that time, there's very few, as you can see, okay? There's not a lot. Carbon is known, sulfur is known, copper, silver, gold, uh, um, Quicksilver or um, mercury was already known, iron, and so on, okay? So at that time, the ancient Greek time, as I mentioned, um, people were then interested in to know, even at that time, you know, there were a lot of philosophers, and they were asking the question, well, how, how is this matter, how is this, uh, all of these elements that we know of and, and other things around us, how, how are they composed of? We, you know, people want to know fundamental um basic of what what are these things made out of and so there's a guy called Democritus uh, who's a philosopher around that time and he proposed that matter is composed of something called he called void which is just emptiness and being and being um, is composed of uh, a bunch of uh, uh, stuff that are called atomos uh, which is something that's indivisible or a piece that's no longer um, sliceable or divisible, okay? So the smallest piece, and this is the Greek uh, letter for it. It looks like Greek to you, if it looks like Greek to you, because that's because it is Greek. Um, it's called atomos, so meaning that it's not divisible anymore, okay? So there's a, a smallest piece 
the, the, the important thing here is to realize that there's the smallest piece and that piece is no longer divisible okay now that's where we're going to end this video we're going to continue in the next video to talk about the next uh, other theory of atoms of uh, matter i should say